What's on my desk today? I've got a question by one of you, which is, can you do a lesson on Manglik Dosha? Yes, I can definitely chat about this. I may not do a formal lesson on it, but I'll share with you what I know. I'll share with you my experiences with Manglik Dosha, how I've seen it in practice, how I've seen people interacting with this concept. So let's chat about this. This is really, really interesting. Now, this is still a big topic in India today. Two young people are about to get married and you find out, oh, no, he's Manglik or, oh, no, she's Manglik. What do we do? And this is happening even today, right? And so what is this? What I'll have to explain from the beginning. What's going on here? Basically, if you're Manglik, it means that you will have Mars seated in houses 12, 1, 2, 4, 7, or 8, all right? And if you look at those houses, those are the houses of domestic harmony, you know, or, you know, of, of home relationships, so family relationships with the second, you know, we've got, uh, we've got pleasure in the 12th, right? We've got you, yourself, in the 1st, We've got family relations there in the fourth, in the seventh, we've got marriage. And in the eighth, we are looking at extended family, all that kind of thing. Now, these are areas in a person's chart where wouldn't it be wonderful to just have just all the good, lovely planets and nice stuff and no problems, right? But most people on the planet have got something touching these houses and you know you can of course have mars seated in one of these that will be manglik you know if you have mars seated in one of those places you are manglik right um or if you have you know saturn seated there rahu seated there saturn aspects rahu aspects all these kind of things we can have different things interacting with these houses that will make that will cause trouble in places where we would want peace and harmony especially domestic peace and harmony right so what has been happening over hundreds of years and is happening even now is people do look at is someone manglik because ideally two manglik people should go together that's quite ideal and i'll talk about why in a moment uh, if one of you is manglik and the other isn't then that is seen as being a relationship that would be incompatible okay now in what ways can it be incompatible well it can be physically incompatible okay so the two of you might have different physical needs and yes that could be to do with intimacy sure but it's also even just to do with just energy just physical energy full stop like maybe one of you Maybe both of you like going hiking, but one of you can go on like a two hour hike and the other one wants to go on six hour hikes, you know, and there's this kind of incompatibility in how much energy each of you has or your appetite for the world or your appetite for travel or how much you go out. Some people love to be at home. They just want to cozy up at home with their books. Some people, they have to go out. They want to go out. They want to do things. And the last thing they want to be do, the last thing they want to do is just be stuck indoors at home. So we can see a lot of these kind of things come up with Manglik. Last year I had, I think it was last year, I had one of you get in touch with me and you were thankful for the reading. And I think I did actually predict the time window in which you were going to get married. I usually predict sort of larger time windows I don't I don't narrow it down to one day so just letting you know when I do predictions I kind of go long range and I predict in bigger windows but someone came back said hey yeah we're getting married but what has happened is that the family astrologer in India has said no these two can't get married they're manglik one of them's manglik you can't do it the, the, the wedding has to stop and I think you had gotten in touch with me to say look would you please write a paragraph just explaining your rationale and how you see these two charts. And I said, of course I would. I would gladly write you a paragraph. And I did write a paragraph of how I see things and what I believe. But it's not to say that, like, I would never say that another astrologer's guidance or input is wrong, or I would never, ever say that because 
that astrologer in India would have a relationship with the family and would know certain things and might know different things to me. And so I would never say anyone else was wrong. But one of the big ways that I that I see two people coming together is that for me, when two people organically naturally come together, that is done by the universe. That's done by the law of attraction. To me, that's done by God. And that's the best matchmaking system we have. And I do believe all marriages are arranged. They're all arranged by God. Even the arranged ones are arranged by God, I do believe. And here with this concept of Munglik, one of the things we can see is, you know, we, we can see things like, will it be, will you have a good marriage? We can see that even without looking at a prospective partner's chart, we can see some things about the kind of marriage that you're going to have. Um, I'll give you an example. So I've got the question here. So, so what is Munglik? We know, and I'll put it on the screen, what the Munglik placements are, okay? And if you've got Mars seated in one of those places, then you are considered Munglik. And ideally, you marry someone who also has Mars in one of these houses. I've seen in practice uh, couples that have you know, I'm just thinking of one couple right now. They've both got Mars in the fourth house. They're a terrific couple. And yeah, they've had some challenges in their relationship, but they're very well matched. One way that the whole Munglik thing has manifested in their life, because one of them is going through a Mars Mahadasha, these two have had to move a lot. And that's how it's manifested for them. That's been the chaos and, you know, craziness that they've had to deal with. It's that they've had to move physical locations a lot, right? I've got the question here on my scribbles. Is is it a problem to, to have this Munglik thing or to, to be Munglik or not Munglik? For me, it's I don't see it as a problem at all. How, and how I read it, I read it more in a bit of an impersonal way, in an uh, energy sort of a way. And I've got here, so is it a problem? Yes and no. So, okay, so we're, let's take a look at no, it's not a problem at all. Let's take a look at a, a sample case. We'll look at uh, Princess Mary Donaldson. Let's, I'll share the screen. How do I do that? I always forget. Okay, there we go. There she is. Uh, Mary Donaldson, have a look at that. She's got perhaps the best marriage ever. I mean, we've seen the wedding. The whole world saw the wedding, right? You could probably watch it on YouTube. Um, you know, it's been many, many, many years, probably at least a couple of decades that she and uh, I think it's Crown Prince, what's his name? Is it Frederick? That's it. I was going to say Philip. But hang on. No, it's not him. It's not Philip. It's Frederick. Yeah. Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, right? So they're married. They have a great marriage, you know, and I bet all the magazines and newspapers have been trying to tear them down and show all oh, these two aren't getting along and there's nothing like that you can search for that you won't find it they're as in love today as they were on their wedding day it is just sublime it's incredible and if you have a look here she is munglik right so she's got her mars here in the first house okay but it's a very happy mars right it's in a ruchak yog i believe that would be a ruchak mahapurush yog even so it's mars in aries in the first house here this mars can't be any happier than it is now in her if we look at her d9 chart right you'll see that she is vagotama by ascendant so she's aries ascendant here so that's a really really good thing to have okay so very much there's uh, a lot of kind of um she's she's in a line she's you know what's inside what's outside everything is all aligned everything is all together kind of thing with this fragotama thing here her internal self you know it's kind of like she is at one with her internal self is is how i would read that uh she's got mars here in aries in the first house all right so d9 it's very likely that you know her partner will be uh in sync with her 
Okay, I was just thinking we could actually look up Crown Prince Frederick right now, but we won't. Let's just stick with her because <laughs> I'm thinking, what if his Mars is somewhere different? But the thing is, she what she's going to attract from him is this kind of um, unity, synergy, harmony, because Mars is in the same place. It actually kind of doesn't matter where his Mars is seated because this is about what she's going to draw out of him. All right. So that's why we can just look at her D1 and her D9 charts. You can see here, I mean, it's such a superb um, in love kind of a story. We've got, if you look at her D9, she's got this true love yoga here. She's got the Lord of the fifth. The sun is conjunct the Lord of the seventh here in the fourth house of home. When you have a relationship between the fifth and the seventh houses, that's a true love yoga. That means you're going to fall in love with that person that you've always longed for. It's, you know, this is the happy story right and she's got aspect from mars this is a good thing this aspect from mars because when you have say for example a conjunction or relationship between like the ultimate true love yoga is a relationship between fifth house seventh house lord and first house lord so look she's got that here in the house of home it's really fantastic so this is an incredible story here of um manglik that is just beautiful right so you can be manglik and you can have the most beautiful relationships i don't want people who are manglik to feel bad about it or think oh no this is a problem or it, it, this concept has a bad reputation in india but you know it, it shouldn't because you can have this and have just the best relationship on the planet right so that's a great story of Manglik being wonderful is it a problem I've got here yes and no so yes it is a problem sometimes and I'll tell you when it is a problem it can indicate that there is karmic um, you will have karmic payments to make in relationship all right so let's say for example and I'm doing the, this is a, a case I've just worked with recently I don't know if you're watching hello if you are you're just the most amazing uh, client and I'm just going to touch on this briefly a client I know has um, Mars Rahu Scorpio in the second house right so and this person had was running the Mars Mahadasha at the prime of her life okay so in that instance Mars and Rahu are conjunct and we can say now I'm I don't remember off the top of my head with her chart, but she might have, there was, I think there was some Saturnian connection as well. And when I was looking at the chart, I just thought, oh, that Mars Mahadasha, that would have been really tough. And in discussing with my client, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we talked about that and that that was really, really, really tough. So if you've got, if you're going to, some people have got that set up but they're not going to run Mars Mahadasha in their lifetime, okay? So then you probably won't have too much problem with that, right? But if your Mars Mahadasha is kind of on your run sheet and you're due to experience that in the prime of your life, then you know ahead of time that, yeah, marriage could be a bit of a difficult thing. And my advice in that situation is to write it out. Okay, because and law of attraction will bring you someone and you might think that you might blame yourself. You might think uh, I did the wrong thing to attract that person into my life or, you know, um, yeah, you might start being hard on yourself. But if there is like a Mars Mahadasha and a Mars Mahadasha, don't worry, that's not too long right? That's a handful of years, really. Uh, and I've seen with some people that, you know, this is the thing, if you, if you commit to your path, if you decide, all right, I'll, I'll write it out, I'll be with this person. Obviously, if there's 
any physical abuse or violence or any of that, definitely leave, 100%, just leave. Just, just don't even think twice. But if you can be in a relationship and allow that relationship to come to its natural conclusion, okay, and there are many astrological points where relationships naturally break. And I'll tell you what those are. I've got here, yeah, relationship will naturally end Okay, so at the end of your Mars Mahadasha, and Mars Mahadasha isn't too long. Okay, so there's that place where the relationship will end. The relationship can end in a significant eclipse. A significant eclipse can <clears throat> just take a person out of your life. At the change of a Mahadasha, all right, so even if you're running, you know, you're going from Saturn to Mercury, or, you know, what else? You're going from like sun to moon or something, whatever it is. You're going from uh, Mahadasha to Mahadasha. At that point, a relationship can end, all right? Um, at a maturation point, okay? So 36, 42, 48, a nodal return, right? So, well, that's 37, 55, Um you know, these kind of points, you will find that a relationship will just come to its natural conclusion. And if you're, and ideally, then you will have, and I say to people, like, have at least a year or two break before you go into another relationship. But if, if you can have one Saturn transit off, so that's two to three years of being alone of rebuilding yourself, of growing, of, you know, because you don't want a rebound person or any of that. You want to leave that chapter. You want to close out that thing in your life. You want to learn again what it is to be you on your own two feet by yourself. You want to know your own vibration, right? And then you'll be ready to, to go forward in life, to be with people, to explore, do that slowly, do that gently, you know. But um, yeah, Munglik is is a fascinating thing. And Munglik, some of the good things about Munglik, one of the things I really like about it is that it's like there's power and energy in those people. They're enthusiastic, they're passionate, you know, there's intensity. Sometimes intensity can be a wonderful thing, right? Like you know, uh, there can be a fearlessness to, to love and things like that. So let's not all say Munglik is a bad thing. I don't think that's a good idea. But I do understand. I know that, and especially if, say, for example, you're going to run your Mars Mahadasha and you've got Rahu, either conjunct Mars or aspecting Mars, or you've got Saturn conjunct Mars or you've got Saturn aspecting. Another thing is that you'll also want to see difficult conjunctions here if moon and venus are involved as well so uh moon mars conjunction or venus mars conjunction you know because that's that's a, a strong aggressive mars energy that's damaging the soft and beautiful moon or the soft and beautiful venus right so that's another thing to be looking out for there there's a lot uh, of things to look out for but definitely use Vedic astrology as a tool for reflection not as something to make yourself feel bad about yourself or you know um, or, or paint someone else in a bad picture or no you don't want to do any of that with, with Vedic astrology it's but it's a it's it's a relief to know that if you for example had a terrible marriage or something like that and to know that, well, that was a karmic payment. I couldn't have particularly avoided it. I had to go through that thing. You know, that's where astrology is great because it can show you that, hey, you couldn't have done life any differently. You had some karma to pay. You've done it. You've paid it. You've done the work. And now it's time to really let that go and to, to build something new right? Whatever that something you might be. The other thing I also wanted to point out was that you can have, um, so let's say, for example, seventh Lord in the second house, seventh Lord in the 11th, seventh Lord in the 12th, seventh Lord in a dual sign. These are some little indicators here that, you know, 
more than one marriage is possible as well. So there's so much to look at here. But I do hope this gives you a bit of an overview of the whole Munglik thing. And I hope it's a balanced overview. I've given you one good case study there to show you that it can be an absolutely beautiful thing. Look at the life of um, Princess Mary Donaldson. You'll see she's got a really great, uh, great life there. And she's Munglik, D1 and D9. So, you know, I hope that's been a good overview for you guys. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.